Hi, I'm Zor. Welcome to Unizor Education. Uh, today we will talk about Taylor series. Um, this lecture is part of the course of advanced mathematics for teenagers and high school students. So it's presented on unizor.com, so you can watch this lecture from, um, from this website, which is definitely recommended because the site has very detailed notes for each lecture. Plus, there is an educational functionality which you can get engaged with, including exams, etc. The site is free. All right, so Taylor series. Okay, now functions can be very simple, right? For instance, it's a simple function in terms of if you are tasked with some kind of calculation, you can very easily do it, right? Or, functions can be really complex. I don't know, sine of uh, natural logarithm of x squared divided by 2 plus e to the power of tangent x. Yeah, go figure and calculate this particular value. That's not really easy, right? So, that's very important, actually, aspect of dealing with functions. Um, if you know something about computers and how they work, um, basically you know that the uh, processors, which are the heart of every computer, can perform um, four arithmetic operations, plus, minus, multiplication, and division, on the level of commands. Basically, a processor command has these type of ty types of commands. There is no command, for instance, for calculating tangent of some value or, or power or logarithm or whatever else. However, you know that if you will take, for instance, a calculator, you have some signs and tangents and logarithm. If you take any computer, there is definitely some way to calculate these values in, in just one stroke, right? So how, how is it done? Well, they approximate. Inside the computer there is some kind of a program which basically is not calculating directly tangent or logarithm or anything like that. They use approximation of these functions using some much simpler operations. Now, what is much simpler operation which includes only four arithmetic operations. Well, it's polynomial, right? If you have some kind of a polynomial, f of x is equal to x cubed plus 3x plus 5. Now, it's easy to calculate it based on just four arithmetic operations. Well, I'm not sure about the power. Power can actually be a little bit more complex. You don't want to multiply x by itself three times, but maybe they do, I don't know. But in any case, this is much simpler than this, right? So any polynomial calculation is much simpler than something like this. So it's very desirable to be able to approximate any function, well, not any, but most of the functions, at least nice functions, smooth functions, with a polynomial, and then the calculations would be much simpler. Now, okay. So that's basically about why we are engaged in something like Taylor series. Now let's talk about a little bit more concrete examples and requirements. Well, first of all, we are talking about functions which require this approximation, um, which are smooth and defined on some uh, segment from A to B. Now, when I'm talking about smoothness of the function, I assume um, it's being continuous and differentiable and maybe twice differentiable, thrice differentiable, maybe differentiable to any level of um, uh, derivatives. So, basically, my very kind of short and not exactly mathematical answer, uh, answer is when I'm talking about smooth function and I'm talking about certain operations, 
I assume that these operations can be done. Now, in this particular case related to the Taylor series, I'm talking about infinite differentiability. And it's a, not such an unusual um, requirement for functions which we are usually um, considering in mathematics. Like, for instance, sine, it's uh, infinitely differentiable. From sine we have a cosine, from cosine we have minus sine, from mi minus sine we have minus cosine, from minus cosine we have sine again, and it all repeats. I mean, if, if you talk about logarithm, it's, uh, um, if it's a natural logarithm, first derivative is 1 over x, second one is one, minus 1 over x squared, etc. I mean, it, it's, it's all infinitely differentiable. So all functions which we will be talking about are smooth in that particular sense. So I'm not going to go into the details of this smoothness. I just assume that if I'm writing something, this is possible to basically to write and the function is really um, possesses the properties necessary for uh, whatever the expressions, the formulas uh, where it's participating. Okay, so that's first. It's done. Now, considering our function is relatively smooth, what I would like to do is approximate it with some kind of a polynomial. Well, again, I would like to be a little bit more precise. Not only I would like to uh, uh, approximate it with some kind of a polynomial, I would like to be able to approximate it as close as I want. So any degree of closeness of my approximation should be allowed. Now, it means my polynomial should be more and more complex, right? To incorporate all the different curvatures of my line. So, let me be more specific. I would like to have a process which can generate for any function which is sufficiently smooth um, it, it can generate basically not just a polynomial but a polynomial series which is uh, c0 plus c1x plus c2x squared plus etc plus cnxn plus etc infinite series. Now, infinite series must, number one, be convergent to my function f of x for any x uh, in this particular interval from a to b. Now, if that is true, if the series is convergent, then I can basically cut it on any level, forget about the tail, and say that, well, this is whatever I cut, let's say, to uh, up to nth uh, uh, power of x. I'm saying, okay, this is approximation. How good is it? Well, for instance, I can evaluate how good it is. But if I want a little bit more precise approximation, I'll just use more members of this series, because series is convergent, which means that our uh, uh, tail becomes less and less um, important. It, it, it has uh, basically, the tail is infinitesimal as I introduce more and more into the main body. So whatever I'm cutting off, even if it's infinite number of um, members of this series, still their sum is infinitesimal if my n is uh, um, going to infinity. So the more members I'm allowing from this um, representation, the more precise would be my um, approximation. I would like to introduce even more uh, as, as, as a requirement, because I know I can satisfy this more, um, I I more important environment. I would like this representation, regardless of the number of members which I am using as an approximation, to be exactly the same as function f I, at one particular point. So there is one particular point where all these are true. Etc. 
So at one particular point, no matter how far I'm cutting my series, I would still have exactly the same value. So I know I can satisfy both requirements, and this one actually makes me um, a little bit more um, assured that my um, approximation will will not will not go too far from from the function because I know that regardless of the number of members I'm using, so at least at one particular point, which is by the way called a center of this representation, so at the center of this representation, uh, it always coincides with the value of the function precisely, regardless of the number of um, members which I am choosing to retain and cutting the tail off. So these two requirements, at one particular point it will be precisely equal to my function regardless of the number of members. Now at, uh, at, at all other points the more members I will have the more precisely my approximation will be because this series is convergent at any point x it convergent to this f. So these are two requirements and now I'm going to basically try to satisfy these requirements. Here is how. Okay. First of all, let me satisfy this requirement. That's the easiest. Here is what I will do. Now, instead of getting my polynomial uh, I will use the uh, sigma symbol for this polynomial because it's infinite. So n greater or equal to 0, that's index cn x to the power of n. So that's my um, polynomial sequence, is a polynomial series. Okay? Now, at point um, x is equal to x0, that would be this, obviously, right? Now, let me express this slightly differently. I will express, instead of this, I will use this representation. Now, is this a polynomial series? Yes, absolutely. Because any uh, x minus x uh, 0 to the power of n is basically a polynomial in its own right, right, of power n. So the sum of these obviously again is a polynomial series. So what this representation gives me is again a polynomial representation, a polynomial series which approximates um, my value uh, of the function uh, of the function f but now I'm absolutely sure that no matter how many members I will, I will choose, if x is equal to x0, all the members starting from n is equal to 1 will just disappear because it will be 0, right? So the only thing I can say about polynomial series of x0 is c0, right? Because starting from c1 it will be, uh, it will be 0. So let me just choose. C0 is equal to f of x0. And I can even represent it this way. P of x is equal to f of x0 plus, and then I will start from 1. Okay, this is a polynomial representation. This is a constant, right? Because this is the function value at one specific point which I have chosen as a center, right? So this is the constant. Cn's are some constants, whatever it is. And this is basically the body of the whole polynomial. But again, at point x is equal to x0, all these members are zero. And my, rega so regardless of how far I will cut my tail off um, the value of the right side at x is equal to x0 will always be f of x0 which is my, my, my requirement to have 
the polynomial representation exactly the same value regardless of the number of members at one particular point. Now let's talk about uh, these coefficients c1, c2, etc. up to infinity. Now, I don't know first of all if such a representation exists and even if I will find something the question is whether the series would be convergent. So what I will do is the following. First let me assume that this representation as a polynomial series exists for a sufficiently um, uh, smooth function. So let's assume that there is such a polynomial <coughs> which is equal to this from 1 to infinity. So let's assume that this exists. From the existence of this I will come up with certain values of Cn. So <coughs> So these values are <coughs> a necessary condition for this representation to be true. And then, after I will find these concrete values for Cn, I will prove that the series really is convergent for these particular coefficients. And that would prove basically that the whole representation makes sense. So, how can I find my values of C M. All right. It's really very simple. Let me make the first derivative. Now this is the constant. So the first derivative would be. Uh, let me just explicitly uh, start it from C one x x x minus x uh, uh, zero to the power of one. What's the derivative would be? C1, right? Plus. The second member would be C2 times, it would be x minus x0 squared. So it's 2x minus x0. Next would be C3, 3x three minus x0 squared, right? Etc. So you remember that xn derivative is n times x to the power x minus 1, <coughs> right? So from x minus x0 square, it would be 2 times x minus x0. From x minus x0 cube, it would be 3 x minus x0 square, etc. up to infinity. So this is a series. Now, what if I will put a derivative of x0? It would be this. So these members will just disappear, right? And what would be left? Just c1. Okay, good enough for me. So let me just leave this as this and from 2 to infinity c n times n times x minus x 0 n minus 1, right? And okay, now this member I can call it c 0 I have already found it, right? Now, basically what I'm saying is that C1 is equal to first derivative of f at point x0. Now, let's do the second derivative. Well, this is a constant, so it disappears. Now, this would be sum of... Well, um, let me again take the first member, so if n is equal to 2, so that's 2 times x minus x uh, 0 to the first degree. 
so it would be 2 times s2 and starting from 3 I will put cn n n minus 1 x minus x0 n minus 2 right so the derivative of x minus x0 to the power of n minus 1 would be n minus 1 times x minus x0 and I reduce the power by 1 so I had n before cn before so that's what will be right so what would be my c2 if I will put x0 here all these will disappear right because not starting from 3 so it will be to the first degree x minus x0 to the first degree which means if x is equal to x0 it will disappear and then the second degree the third etc and the only thing which is left would be this so that's f second derivative divided by 2 right okay third derivative okay this disappears it's a constant and here again the one which as uh, uh, the n is equal to 3 I will just use so it's uh, 3 and 2 and c3 that's the coefficient at x minus x0 to the first degree which means when I'm getting a derivative from this x minus x0 disappears and I have only coefficient now starting from the next I have n n minus 1 n minus 2 x minus x0 n minus 3 and again if I put a third derivative at point x0 this will disappear and I have just this so c3 is equal to third derivative oops, at point x0 divided by 3 times 2 well as you probably figure out that I can actually write a general expression which I can prove by induction but it doesn't really make much sense anyway because it's obvious it's n n's derivative divided by well if it's 2 it's 2 if it's 3 it's 3 times 2 if it's 4 it will be 4 3 2 etc so it's basically n factorial right so I can make times 1 here times 1 here divided by 1 here and even with a 0 actually I can put 0 factorial here so this is for any n from 0 to infinity so my function actually is equal to let me return back to starting from zero um, where n from 0 to infinity assuming that 0's derivative is actually the function itself then the first derivative is the first derivative etc and 0 factorial is 1 by definition as we know so this formula actually is act, it, it, it just true for any n right fine I have found my coefficients now question is I mean maybe it's not convergent at all I mean I found a necessary condition for my coefficient cn to be of this value of this type so x0 is that center if you remember which we have fixed in the very beginning and as a function it looks like this but maybe it's not convergent for any x so this is another 
uh, piece of the proof which I would like to continue with. Now, there are certain conditions on these nth derivatives which we really have to impose, otherwise there is no talking about any kind of convergence, because this is unknown thing, right? We, we don't know anything about f. But let's consider for a second that the nth derivative, no matter what n is, is um, bounded by some value. So let's just assume let's just assume that we are talking about functions with bounded derivatives of any sort. So let's let's consider that f n of x let's say by absolute value is less than some value m where x belongs to a b now how um, important actually this um, particular requirement is well it is important because again if you consider some function like for instance tangent um, on interval which includes minus p over 2 and s pi over 2. Now let's consider function tangent on some interval which is greater than this one. So we have these points where number one tangent itself is not defined and number two, in the immediate neighborhood of this point, derivative goes to infinity, right? Vertical, vertical der uh, 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 derivative. So it's 90 degree, basically, right? So the tangent is equal to, uh, to infinity. Now, um, so what I'm trying to do right now is to say that we are considering only functions which do have um, certain bound on their derivatives up to any degree, up to any level of, um, uh, of complexity. So, for instance, on this particular interval, my tangent and its derivatives basically are bounded by some value. So I assume that we need this particular re requirement for any derivative within the interval where we are considering our function, where we would like to approximate our function. I would like all these derivatives at any point of this interval to be bounded by some value. Now, why do I need it? Well, Obviously, because now I can say that these are always less than than m sigma n from 0 to infinity, x minus x 0 n to the n factorial. So now I have to only prove the convergence of this series. Now, there are probably a little bit less um, strict requirements for these um, derivative. For instance, I can ask that this particular, these particular derivatives are growing as n goes to infinity, but only as a power function, like this one. This is also fine, but it's a little bit complicated, and that's why I don't want to, to concentrate on this. I deliberately chose a simple um, uh, restriction on all the derivatives, just to be independent of it. So now I have to prove only the uh, convergence of this. But basically, again, since um, so I if I will prove that, then even if m is not a constant, but something like m to the power of n, which I can connect with this to the power of n, it will still be convergent. I just don't want to go into these details. So let's just concentrate on this thing. And, um, and prove that this is convergent. Well, first of all, let's just think about this. As n is increasing to infinity, 
I'm multiplying my denominator by greater and greater and greater number, right? But this I'm multiplying only by the same x minus x zero as n increasing, right? So next will be x minus x um, zero to the n's multiplied by x minus x zero, and this will be next multiplied by n plus one. So no matter how big x is, this thing is always increasing this multiplier in the denominator, but numerator is always multiplied by the same number. So it's obvious that denominator is growing and significantly faster after a certain value of n, obviously. Now, that actually kind of makes us to believe that the whole member is um, infinitesimal, and it is, obviously. But that's not sufficient for the whole series to converge. What I would like to do is, I would like to prove that this thing is actually bounded from the top by some um, uh, geometric uh, progression with the quotient less than one, which means it's convergent. We know from the properties of geometric conversion that if the quotient is less than one, then uh, the infinite geometric progression is converging. So that's what I'm going to do. And it's really not very difficult at all. So how can we prove that this thing is converging? So we don't need m, it's a constant, so this is the only thing which we need. Well, let me just do it even simpler c to the power of n divided by n factorial, n from 0 to infinity. c is any number, basically no matter uh, what number it is, we're talking about some number, we're talking about convergent for con convergence for any particular x, right? So it doesn't matter what I put, x minus x0 or c, etc. So I would like to prove that this is convergent. Okay, how can I do it? Here is the way. Let's choose an integer, m is integer, and m is greater than c. So no matter what c is, maybe c is 25.7, then I will choose 26, something like this, right? Now, c to the power of n divided by n factorial. This is c to the power n minus m times c to the power of m, right? Now, n is growing to infinity, so after certain uh, n, which is greater than m, I can write something like this. So, n minus m is positive, and m is also positive, etc. Divided by n factorial. Now, n, again, is going into infinity, so I can just start from any n I would like, and obviously, if n is greater than m, I can represent n factorial as um, m factorial times m plus 1, m plus 2, etc., up to n, right? So far I did not change anything. I just replaced n factorial, which is product of all numbers from 1 to n. I divided by the product from all numbers from 1 to m, and then whatever left to, to n, right? Now, if I will reduce my denominator, I will increase the fraction, right? So, how many numbers I have here? From n minus m, so I have n minus m different numbers. All of them are greater than m, right? Because it's m plus 1, m plus 2. So if I will replace it with m to the power n minus m, I will decrease denominator because each one of them is greater than m. And since I decrease denominator, I increase the fraction. Now, what is this? Let's combine this and this. So it's c over m to the power n minus m times 
some kind of a constant Q. Now M is fixed, it depends on C. C is fixed, M factorial is fixed, so it's some kind of a quotient, doesn't really matter, some, fra uh, some factor. As N goes to infinity, Q is not dependent on N, right? Q is a constant relative to N. Now, what is this? C divided by M is less than 1, right? By absolute value. We're talking about absolute value, of course. Which means that this represents a member of geometric progression with C over M being a uh, quotient and this quotient is less than 1 which means that this particular thing is less than um, less than or equal to some kind of constant A to basically bypass all the members starting from, zero, from 0 up to up to m, whatever it is, some kind of constant. I'm not interested in the beginning because beginning is always fixed, right? We are interested in infinity. So after infinity, I mean towards infinity, this thing would be uh, sigma of uh, c over m to power n minus m. And some, again, quote, uh, some, some factor here. So this is basically a geometric progression. And obviously, since C over M is, by absolute value, is less than 1, my geometric progression has, my infinite geometric progression uh, uh, can be summed up. And the series, geometric series, will have certain uh, concrete value as a sum. So it's convergent. So basically what we have proven is that this thing is converging. That's basically all I needed. Because in the very beginning we kind of assumed that it's convergent and then we came up with values for all the coefficients of this um, Taylor uh, series. And now, uh, so, it's a so it's a necessary condition. And now I have proven that with these coefficients my um, my series, my Taylor series, is actually convergent for any value of the argument. And uh, well, that's basically the only thing which I needed. So now I have proven this particular um, representation, uh, which we were considering the Taylor series. Let me just write it again. So f of x is equal to uh, sigma f n's derivative at point x0 divided by n factorial x minus x0 to the power of n, where n is from 0 to infinity. So this particular representation um, is a converging series which is converging to my function f of x for every x and at particular x is equal to x0 this series not only this whole series is equal to this but also every uh, partial sum of it will also be uh, the same as f of x0 so these are two conditions which we have satisfied. We put it in the front of us in the very beginning. And um, it's called Taylor series, as I was already talking about. Um, also, if x0 is equal to 0, I mean, there are certain segments which contain 0, and people want 0 to be the center. Then this uh, Taylor series is called sometimes Maclaurin series, which is basically a different name because probably Maclaurin was the first one who kind of uh, investigated this particular thing at x is equal to uh, x0 equal to 0. All right, so that's it for today. I do recommend you to read notes for uh, this lecture on unisor.com. Um, notes represent basically like 
pages of, of the textbook um, and um, try to uh, to think about this proof of convergence of this thing um, uh, there are actually very um, interesting researches about how much we are losing by catching my tail at certain point so there is an evaluation of the error of the approximation which I didn't go into now in theory I can always using my um, uh, my um, proof that members of this sequence are less than the corresponding geometric progression uh, sequence I could obviously summarize the tails of the geometric progression and that would be a nice evaluation for how much we are losing by catching at certain moment my uh, Taylor series so with, with a partial sum. Um, I, I'm not sure if I will go into these details um, but it's interesting researches and uh, there are more or less important um, uh, articles about uh, what kind of restrictions should be put on the uh, derivatives of the function f? I just put a uh, restriction that it's just always less than some constant m, right? You can actually be a little bit um, more specific and have a weaker restriction. Um, like it's growing, for instance, with the power of n. That would be probably the same thing, more or less. All right, so all these are very interesting, obviously, elements of the research. Um, but in any case, my purpose was to basically introduce you that any smooth, any smooth function can be represented to any degree of precision with some kind of a polynomial. And this is most likely, well, maybe my information is obsolete, but that was the case long, long time ago when I was involved with computers. Most likely, this is exactly the way how in calculators and computers um, all these calculations of some specific functions which are not polynomial functions uh, are implemented okay that's it for today thank you very much and good luck <laughs>